Oh man, exciting times in the world of politics. <laughs> President Biden drops out of the race. Kamala Harris wins enough delegates in like two days, all of a sudden to be the nominee. I've really kind of been out of politics for the last several years. I've just been working on self, doing introspection, uh, doing meditating, trying to work on how to manifest the exact life that I want for myself. Um, of course, with some divine little sprinkles interjected here and there. But uh, I do want to make a quick video about a couple ways that Kamala can win or lose this election. I'm not even necessarily advocating for her, but as I see this thing unfolding, I see her walking into some uh, very easy traps to avoid. So Kamala and your campaign or people who want to see Kamala win, take these things down because you're making some mistakes already. One, stay a thousand miles away from I'm with her. I'm with her was just used in 2016. Trump beat it. He beat it in a race that there was, if you remember back, there was no way possible Trump was going to beat Hillary Clinton. It was impossible. I'm with her. She lost. Stay away from I'm with her. The second thing is you absolutely will lose this race if you run primarily on it's time for a woman president, a woman of color. Now people are saying that she's Asian as well. All those are losing strategies. People are over that. They're over the perception of that. There's enough middle class people who will actually vote for Trump or more than likely not vote at all. If you push your candidate as it's time for a woman, people just want who's qualified, competent and going to make their lives easier and do a better job. Um, I once heard this thing maybe like 2008 when President Obama was running and it stuck with me ever since. A political activist was saying, a political consultant was saying, half the people vote for a candidate because they have R next to their last name. Half the people vote, no. 45% of the people vote for someone who has an R next to their name. 45% vote for someone who has a D next to their name. So really the election comes down to the 10% who could go either way. So Kamala, Stop reminding people that you're a woman, her supporters primarily, because she's not really beating it, but her supporters are her supporters. Stop reminding people that not only white men are qualified for the job. Anybody who's going to vote for Kamala for those reasons doesn't need a reminder. They're going to vote for her. They know. But you absolutely can isolate the people who you need, the 10 percent who's like, eh. I'm not quite sure which way to go. And a lot of those people are people who grew up with Republican values. They grew up with conservative ideologies. But now the Trump has made it such a circus. They can vote away from Trump. They're like, listen, I'm a Republican, but that <laughs> that's a shit show. There's enough of that out there and you need to pick those voters away. So how do you do it? How do you do it? Here's how you do it. Here's the payoff. You do it by scrapping the we're the left by like scrapping a tax on trump and you appeal to the pain of the people who went to him in the first place and you say listen i understand times are tough the economy is terrible stop lying stop telling people stuff like we handed you the best economy and the most economic growth in the last people know that's a lie because they don't feel it like i'm a prime example i'm making more money than i've ever made in my life Yet the water level is right here. <laughs> Why is that? Everything's going up. Oh, by the way, I have two kids that are about to hit college age. So stop with the BS of like, everything's better now than it's ever been. No, that that loses credibility. To gain credibility, it's just like, listen, I know right now your dollar's not spending like it should. I know cost of living is up. I know that you're afraid that immigrants are coming in here and getting more rights than you. I know you're afraid that and you know what you can't be afraid to do if you're Kamala? Throw past Democratic candidates under the bus. <laughs> Those votes are already cast. Go out there and say, you know what? You got to be careful. You got to be a politician about it. But you say, there have been some policies recently that I don't like and I don't agree with. And I have seen some really counter, some really great points made by my opponent about this, this and that. Those things do need to change. 
then you can win in some of that 10% who's not quite sure who they're voting for. But if you go up there trying to blow smoke and, and kind of like paint a rosy picture and tell people that things are better than they are, they won't trust you and they won't vote for you. So who's going to win? I don't know, man. It's up in the air. I'll be working on myself anyway. But feel free to comment below who you like, who you got, as long as you can do it respectfully because everything connects. Peace.